stick with me and I'm going to show you how to make a very inexpensive raised garden bed out of free pallets. I actually built this pallet bed uh, I think somewhere around June or July last summer and it's just a story I haven't got to because I was like why would I release this in the middle of the winter no one's gardening but the weather's getting nicer and we're getting the gardening itch I'm itching right now I want to get out and play in the soil so I thought I'd share this with you I was gonna make a, a nice raised bed and, and as I'm getting older I, I want a nice high bed so I don't have to bend over and kill myself and I was pricing wood and was blown away that wood is so damn expensive now it's outrageous so I decided to look around and find how to do this with free pallets and I kind of took some of the ideas out there and came up with my own it's a very very inexpensive and if you really want to like get down to the nitty-gritty you can pull the nails and, and completely do it for free but Hopefully you guys will like how this turned out, and I hope you try it yourself. So I'm going to uh, make a raised bed out of pallets. This is a heat-treated one, so it's safe. You want to stay away from ones that have a little mark that says MB on the side. Uh, as far as... So you look at the stick, the stamp here. It says HT, it means it's heat treated. If that said MB, it's chemical treated. You don't want it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I am gonna cut, I'll use my foot here. I'm gonna cut these out here and here. Um, and you'll get an idea what I mean to save time so I don't have to deal with pulling nails. And then I'm gonna kinda stack these together. Now I got this idea watching a, a lady, Australian lady, a thousand words, her YouTube, and hers is much prettier than mine's gonna be. Mine's gonna be a little more ghetto, but it should work really good. So we'll see how it comes out. So this will give you a better idea what I mean. I'm just gonna cut these out, then I don't have to deal with nails. I'm gonna use these pieces of scrap right here. Okay, so here's where I'm at with this pallet build. Um, I pretty much, I, I think I'm just going to do a little one. I was going to make a really deep one, but I don't think I have enough dirt. So I'm only going to do, it's probably going to be about like 14, 15 inches off the ground. So let me show you what I did. So these are the salvageable pieces off the pallets. Probably have to square up a few of them. It's hard to cut uh, perfectly straight. If I can get a table saw from my neighbor, I might do that. And then these are the pieces that are left. I'm actually going to try to use the entire pallet and stick these on the inside as braces. So we'll see. This is only two pallets I cut up, and they weren't even that good of pallets. They didn't have a whole lot of usable wood. Like, here's all the scrap. Maybe I can get some use out of that. I don't know. So hopefully I got enough for a little bed. We'll see what happens here. So here's where we're at. You're basically fence building. I use the leftover braces in the pallets and ran them all the way across and then I staggered the boards from different pallets just kind of give it a cool a better look um, kind of more random and this is the measurement of one of the pieces of the pallets that's left like a cut off here but you're going to use it to measure your joining pallet and the wall so you want to leave space on the ends for that so you kind of start on the ends, and i got to cut this section off where I, I put a line. And then the, the bottom's a little jagged too. I'll probably just take a skill saw and knock all that down into one level. So there you go, and then I'll join four of these together. Oh, here's what it looks like on the other side if you want to kind of see what the person will be looking at. And then I'll probably put a cap on the top. So I really don't have any money into this, um, except I didn't feel like reusing the nails. I mean, if you're really broke, I guess you could pull the old rusty nails and use them again. But I use, um, this was like six bucks. They're the star drive screws, uh, but they're decking screws, so they won't rust and cause problems, so I hope. So there you go. So about three-fourths there. 
you get a kind of a rough idea what it's going to look like. And um, let me show you some stuff on the inside. So I use the pallet braces on the inside. I measured them, uh, one of them 36, the side ones here are 36 cuts, 36 inches. Then the other ones are 39, like an inch and a half on each side. Uh, so they fit together, they butt up against each other. This will actually give me just a little more space because this wood takes up a lot of space in your uh, bed. So I added an inch and a half on each side so that my actual soil will still be close to 36. Now these braces are really thick and you're like, well, come on, this is kind of an overkill. But uh, dirt gets heavy and pushes, so it should be very strong and heavy. But also it's um, good just to recycle all the pallet. And when the whole darn pallet's almost used. Unfortunately, I underestimated how bad the scrap is. There's a lot of, you know, when you get these things, they're free for a reason, because most of them are busted. They're missing a bunch of boards. So I am going to have to scrap one more. I thought I could do this with two, but I had two in poor quality. Um, you probably could do it with two good ones or three cruddy ones. Um, and if you didn't have enough of these braces, you can stud your leftovers together because I am cutting them down to make a fourth wall. So I'll show you when it comes all the way done. All right, so the sides are all screwed together. What I did is I screwed these two portions together, the thick portions with uh, three inch screws. And one of the areas I had a bracket because there wasn't enough wood to really get a good screw. I put cardboard down. And now at this point, I'm gonna fill up, um, well, this is really deep. So I'm probably gonna put in some wood chips, then some dirt, and then fill it back up with wood chips at the end. So let's see how this goes. All right, so you can get an idea of what I'm doing here. Because this box is almost uh, two feet deep here, I put a bunch of chips in as filler on the bottom. Now, some people don't put wood chips. They put soil first, wood chips, um, and that's all they do. But because I needed to get this box up, one, all that soil would be pretty darn expensive and pointless. But I'm planning for next year. You see, this kind of late into the season. I'm in July here when I'm doing this. So I'm just using this box to grow greens, like really fast microgreens. So what I'm really planning for is the next year. This, these wood chips will break down a good chunk of them and become amazing soil over the next two years. So you can get an idea. I will go um, about half wood chips, a quarter dirt, and then another quarter wood chips after I plant on top. Just to, So I'm going really, really deep. Now, I learned about wood chips through the Back to Eden method about, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And I've tried all kinds of gardening, and I keep coming back to it. Wood chips are amazing. You really have to do no watering, very, very little weeding. Um, it gives, it breaks down to amazing soil. I never have to fertilize. This, uh, I just can't say good enough things about wood chips, but they need to be wood chips, not really mulch. It doesn't work with mulch. Because when you look at these wood chips, you, these things act like sponges. They soak water up and then slowly release them as the plant needs it. It doesn't work as well with mulch. It still will work, but wood chips is always my favorite. Also, you want to try to pick the wood chips that are really tiny because they break down in the soil fast. The big chunks are kind of a pain. They take a while to break down. I mean, you leave them, put them on top or something just to protect it from the sun. But So anyway, I'm going to finish this and you'll get an idea. And I'll probably put a cap on the end just to make it look better on the top. So at this point, I put some troughs into the wood chip so I could actually get to the soil and get in there, just kind of get a better look. And then I found some scrap wood and put a cap on. This helps keep the wood chips from spilling out the edges. Also, I can put like some minor plants and stuff like that on it. Nothing too heavy though, because it's only nailed into the sides. Um, I wish I found a better way to do this. I'll probably put some braces in the next time I make it so it has a, um, can take more weight, but it's pretty good for what it is. 
So here's my game plan. I am going to grow a couple things that I never eat just to see if I like them. Watercress. And right here, this guy. I'm going to grow those. Uh, blue kale, kale, blue curled, which I think is kind of like a dinosaur curl. Um, then these burpees were on sale for half price. And I like burpee. They're usually pretty good. Spinach and uh, black seeded simon. I, I don't even know what this kind is. We're going to give it a whirl. So that's my little microgreen garden I'm going to grow. And we'll see how this comes out in two weeks. All right, so I opened up a little trough of soil. And this is about the only time you got to worry about this, just getting them started. I try to get the seeds on the soil for a few days, and then once they start growing, I put the wood chips around them. Um, I recycled everything, <laughs> including these tags from other plants. Uh, right, so, and um, I put a cap on this, by the way. So I've got a little ledge I can work with, I can put stuff down on, you see. And the cap was uh, some spare wood I had again. So this, the entire project here cost me um, about 20 bucks. About 12 of it was in soil, and 8 of it was in screws and nails. Um, everything else I got for free. Alright, so, oh and the seeds. I forgot about the seeds. So the seeds are probably another 6, 7 bucks. All right. All right, so I'm going to do intensive planting. So you're putting a lot of seeds in one trough. And it's survival of the fittest. They all kind of grow around each other. So there's the first seeds away. I forgot to also mention that I wet the chips and soil down before I did this. And like seeds like this say do not... Uh, they don't want to be compacted here, so they just put them on top. Now some of these will kind of work their way around the wood chips if they're in the way. Um, that's pretty much, they will find their way down. You don't have to completely have soil showing. It'll still work. Here's what they look like after about two to three weeks of growth. So they started out pretty great, and then they kind of stalled and went slow after that. So here's what the raised bed looks like after a few weeks, about six weeks. The bib lettuce did come up, and the kale started. But, oh, this guy's this stuff here. And then I took the dead spots and put some strawberry plants in, and they've been doing well. So we'll see what happens with that. Spinach really didn't do much. There's a little bit of growth but the bib lettuce did well so I must have either planted the wrong kind of stuff put too many seeds in because they didn't grow as fast as I wanted them for microgreens you're supposed to have a harvest within two to three weeks and this is six weeks and it's not even really harvestable so maybe the bib is that's about it I'm gonna try to figure out what I did wrong but I imagine though that this will be a wonderful strawberry patch when it gets going so I'm probably gonna convert it over to strawberries if nothing works Thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope you go try to make your own pallet beds this summer. If you do, I think you'll be very happy with how they turned out. Also, check out some of my other gardening videos. You'll see them appearing here, and uh, we will start playing in the dirt. Also, remember to subscribe if you're brand new. If you're not new, hey man, check out my Patreon. It's only a dollar a month, and it helps support Get Me off the YouTube ad money and I'd really like to be free of YouTube and, and their draconian rules so please go check out my Patreon. I'll see you guys at the next video.